Hey everybody, today I want to share with you a quick hack or cheat that I like to use when I'm building my video games so that I can access data that I need from just about anywhere. And this applies to not just content assets like sprites and icons and things like that or 3D models, but also my scriptable objects in prefabs, especially scriptable objects. So, so I want to show you real quickly what I'm talking about, and then I'll dive into the couple lines of code that could save you a ton of work. If that sounds helpful, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and share, and drop a comment if you have any other good advice or tips that I should be sharing with everybody else. So here's my bot setup. You can see I've got a couple different bots showing up in the UI and I can click and buy them. And these I needed to get access to because they're scriptable objects. My scriptable objects are all stored in a game folder. Well, some of them are. They're in this game folder with droids, factories, and mining ships. But I've also got a few more down in a prefabs folder that I might be able to find. Here they are. You can see I've got some captains, some items, which are actually my resource types, and some station actions. And all of these are data that I need access to in my game. These ones and the other ones. And to access them, I just use this simple game data object right here. So if I click on it, you see that it's got a list of all of my resource types all of my station actions, which are really upgrades, it's kind of in a renaming process, all the captains, which are being replaced with droids, which are right below, and all of the factories, which will eventually replace station actions. So how do these all appear and how do I use them? Well, first, I've got a game data object just sitting in my scene with a game data script on it. And that's pretty much the core of it. The game data script has some public static accessors to allow me to get all of the different objects that I need so I can get back the array of all resource types, all actions. Here I've got a filtered version of all non-mine actions just so that I can test it out if I need to do something temporarily. Obviously I would uh, not keep doing this continuously so that we don't call to array and do a filter on it every time that I get it. I'd probably cache that as a separate list eventually, but you can see I'm not actually using it, so I'll just delete it. And that's kind of the way that I like to use this game data class. I'll put things in as I need it. If I don't need them later, I'll just hit control X and delete them. Don't need to clutter it up with stuff that I'm not actually using. Below that, I've got my all captains, all droids, and all factories. Notice that these are all public static. So when I want to reference them from anywhere, like let's say I want to reference my all captains, let's hit shift F12. I can see I, here I just grab the first captain. So I do game data dot all captains dot first or default whenever I assign a captain. I'm switching that out with droids though that'll do different things. And if I look for all references to droids, you see that I'm actually just stealing the reference to that list and caching them over here in my awake. But I could just reference this as well. And then I've got, let's see one more, like uh, the all station actions, all actions. This one's referenced in a couple places and does things like filter to give me a list of possible actions that my bots could choose from. So how do we fill this up? How do we get all of that data? It's actually really simple. You see right up above, I've got some serialized fields that are just arrays of those types. And then I've got an awake method that sets the instance object or the instance reference to this so that whenever I call game data dot instance right down here on line 23, it's set and I can reference it to get these properties. But how are the properties getting filled out or the backing fields? Simple on validate call. Now you could do this in a couple different places, but what I usually like to do for this is just put them in an on validate with an if def on the Unity editor tag so that it will work um, only in the editor, only when you're doing your building, you're modifying and all that, and you're not gonna have to worry about this running at runtime. And also because some of the things that we need to use in here don't work inside of uh, or outside of the editor. So I've got this get all sprites. I'm gonna just minimize this because it's not a core part of it. The core part here is the get all instances. So this is a method that if you just search on uh, on Google for get all instances unity, you'll find this exact code. It uses the asset database, finds all of the objects that match that specific type, and then puts them into an array here. So it gets the GUIDs, then loops through, gets the actual objects and returns those back as the array. So we're getting all of the instances in on validate, caching them, and then just making them publicly available. Super simple. Again, like I said, this isn't the most advanced, most complicated data management system. It's not something for saving your data. It's not something for like an MMO or a really large scale set of data. But if you have small bits of data that are used throughout your code, you don't have a spot where you're storing them, a place where you're kind of pushing them off to, then a simple system like this works really well. And I still end up using 
this kind of setup for some things even in big games. It might start off with a setup like this for everything and then slowly kind of move things that are big key parts where there's a ton of data into spots that make more sense. But then there's always a little bit of extra data that's just kind of sitting around that doesn't really have a good spot for it and I just leave that in here. So I like to start here and then leave a little bit in here at the end. So I'm curious what everybody else thinks if you guys do something similar to this, if you have some other advice, if you think this is terrible. I'm sure there's at least a couple of you out there like, don't do this. It's terrible. Don't don't just store your data globally. But there's some real benefits of making it extremely easy um, and extremely accessible and, until you need something else. So if you got a comment, a thought on it, please drop it down below. Um, if you're looking for the code, I'll try to link that down below as well. And uh, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share button. Oh, and also check out that um, Unity Asset Store sale. Use the code. I'll put a link or the code down below too. Go get a deals on, the, on all their Black Friday stuff. All right, see you in the next video.